when I had decided to write what became The Art of Aromatherapy, I wanted to write something that was different to Dr. Valnay's book. Mm. And that's why I called it The Art of Aromatherapy, mm. because I felt that, okay, this is about the science. I'm going to write about the other side, that mm -hmm. he didn't talk about mm. the effect of smell on the psyche, mm -hmm. um, and, and those more esoteric mm. aspects, the energetics, uh, traditional medicine. So that's why I concentrated on those mm. things uh, in that book. And because I couldn't find very much in the science, I looked into the past for information, mm -hmm. into the, a long way into the past mm. uh, to find everything I could. Mm. Yes. Mm. I had more knowledge. So with Tony Balash, who had a pharmacology background, mm -hmm. um, then we wrote together essential oil safety. Mm -hmm. um, and what I, have, what I had tried to do and still try to do is to look at, is this evidence from traditional medicine or is it purely laboratory work mm -hmm. or is it really clinical evidence mm -hmm. and those three different aspects mm -hmm. sometimes get confused mm -hmm. and I think it's good to be very clear about what is the basis for what we're doing mm -hmm. is it is it really solid evidence mm -hmm. and what kind of evidence mm -hmm. uh, the way I see it now is that ar aromatherapy is really a collection of different ways of using essential oils mm -hmm. which are only loosely related um, so there is skin care, there is psychological, mental health, there is environmental um, hygiene, and there is medicine. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of them can be, have connections, mm -hmm. but really they are all di distinct aspects, mm -hmm. or, uh, and yet they all come under the name mm -hmm. aromatherapy. Mm -hmm. So that's how I view it mm -hmm. now, yeah. Well, it, it the revised edition started with the idea that every essential oil should be fully examined mm -hmm. and given its own little profile, mm -hmm. in some cases not so little. Um, and so the new edition has a little over 400 essential oils that have been fully and separately profiled. Mm -hmm. So you have the constituents of the essential oil where we know it, the ranges of each constituent maximum and minimum ranges, mm -hmm. and that may depend on geographical origin mm -hmm. or other conditions. Mm -hmm. um, so to, to, to start from that point of view, mm -hmm. to identify obviously exactly which plant we're talking about, whether it is a chemotype, mm -hmm. and then to talk about the different aspects mm -hmm. of the safety. Mm -hmm. So is there any effect, in, is there any problem with cancer or pregnancy or skin reactions mm -hmm. and so on? Mm -hmm. So each essential oil is, is mm -hmm. treated that way. Oh, okay. And of course in some cases there is no information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but where there is no information, sometimes we can say probably this, probably that. This mm -hmm. is most likely, mm -hmm. you know, maybe dangerous in this way mm -hmm. or most likely it's completely safe. And this is why, because mm -hmm. we can look at the constituents and mm -hmm. say, there's nothing dangerous in here, mm -hmm. if we already know about the constituents. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the main change that took place, but it also had a, had a, a sort of a knock-on effect on the rest of the book, mm -hmm. which is now two or, I can't remember exactly, two to three times bigger than this edition. Oh, really? It's not new equipment, it's me finding new information. Mm, 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 mm. Um, either that I didn't see the first time, mm. or in most cases it's new information, that uh, has, ah, because okay. so much research has happened in the last 15 years. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So for example, in this book there are 500 references, mm -hmm. in the new edition there are 4,000 references. Okay. Mm. There's a lot more. You can evaluate research partly within being critical of that mm. paper, mm -hmm and criticizing the different points within the paper. But I think more importantly, by comparing other research in the same area, mm. I think that is the most useful, mm. uh, what, the most useful um, outcome mm. from looking at a lot of different research mm. is you start to get a feeling for what's really happening. Mm -hmm. So you look at different aspects. Mm. Um, for example, with the environmental fragrancing, mm. <coughs> essential oil constituents are also within a class known as volatile organic compounds, mm -hmm. which can cause respiratory problems in people who already have respiratory disease. Mm -hmm. So if you have asthma mm -hmm. or chronic obstructive pulmonary, mm -hmm. pulmonary disease, mm -hmm. 
then you don't want to be inhaling all day volatile organic compounds, whether it's from new carpet or new paint mm -hmm. or essential oils. Mm -hmm. So then I thought, I, this doesn't make sense mm -hmm. because essential oils can surely be therapeutic in respiratory disease. Mm -hmm. So I had to look very closely at this with my collaborator to figure out, is this good or bad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's going on? Mm -hmm. Great. So, and if you just look at one piece of research, mm -hmm. It can be very confusing mm, yeah. because you need to you need to be able to look at a lot of research and kind of take a step back and see the big picture of what's going on. Okay. Well, to to begin with, you you need to be sure about what you have when you say you have lemon oil or sandalwood oil. What do you actually have? And and the only certain way to do that is to analyze it. Mm. That's often important in research, and it's often not done mm. in research. They just say, we use this and we use that. Mm -hmm. But which type of rosemary did you use? Mm -hmm. Or which type of lavender did you use? Mm -hmm. It sometimes can make a big difference. Mm -hmm. So that's important. And also from the point of view of um, if oxidation has set in mm -hmm. in an essential oil, then it's not as the same as it when it was fresh. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that those things are important that you, you are clear about what it is you're using. Mm -hmm. And then for evidence, I think there are two aspects. Mm -hmm. there's, there's the clinical and the pharmacological. Mm -hmm. The clinical is to show that there is really an effect mm -hmm. against placebo or however the mm -hmm. trial is done. Uh, and if you can also show why that effect takes place, mm -hmm from other types of evidence, mm -hmm. and they tell the same story, mm -hmm. then you have something solid. Mm -hmm. Depends how, kind of depends how solid it was mm -hmm. in the beginning, but mm -hmm. in most cases it's, it's great if you can see the same research done by different people. Mm -hmm. uh, because then you can be sure that there was no bias mm -hmm. or vested interest mm -hmm. in the outcome of the research. Mm -hmm. The situation for aromatherapy is much, much better today mm -hmm. than it was when I started in, in the 1960s and 70s. Mm -hmm. there, one of the trends that is currently happening is that there are more medicines being developed mm -hmm. based on essential oils. Mm -hmm. For example, in Germany, there is now a capsule called Selexan, mm -hmm. which contains lavender oil. Mm -hmm. and is, It is an approved medicine for the treatment of anxiety. And it's lavender oil, that's all it is. It's lavender oil in, in capsule form. Also, I think aromatherapy is developing in its different facets. Mm -hmm. So we are, we've seen a tremendous development in skincare products over the last mm -hmm. 20 years mm -hmm. uh, with essential oils mm -hmm. and skincare. Um, we are now seeing uh, interesting possibilities with environmental fragrancing, not just in terms of mood, but also in terms of hygiene and both of those together. Mm -hmm. So I think there are a lot of very exciting developments that are mm -hmm. happening.